I'm trying. Hello, everybody. I'm Carrie Sundra of Alpen Glow Industries. Today, I have joining me my good friend Bibiana Cha. Hello. She, hello. We uh, we met back in college, and we've known each other for a very long time. And um, she's going to talk to us about uh, making all sorts of cool biomedical devices, and just going to chat about basically what got her into STEM, uh, how she felt when when like uh, <laughs> when we all hit college. I know I know the I know some of the answers to that. <laughs> And um, and then we're going to talk about like the cool things that she's worked on and just like the paths that her career has taken. Um, you know, I'd, I'd love to touch on like how things changed when you had kids and like if, you know, you felt supported in your career at that point or not and stuff like that. And uh, and then finally, like what you're kind of thinking about, about uh, tech versus uh, like more managerial roots, because I know you've done a little bit of both and stuff like that. Yes. A lot of people have those questions. So <laughs> for sure. Hello, Bob. How's it going? Good to see you. <laughs> I know so, we, miss, um, we missed a week. <laughs> I have wanted to be an engineer since I was pretty young. Uh, I think that it's interesting because my mom was the one that fixed everything in the house. So like oh. a lamp broke and she'd be like taking it apart and fixing things. So that's the that's all I knew, right? Oh, and when I came to America, the only subject that I was really good at in the beginning was math because the numbers translated. So I really gravitated towards sciences and math just because that's what I was good at when I got here. And I was really interested in it. And then um, and, I and how old were you? I was 10. OK, cool. Yeah. So and then um, and then I want to be an engineer probably since seventh grade. First, I wanted to be an aerospace engineer, and then I decided that I wanted to be a medical device engineer, probably. Good, like, good call. <laughs> <laughs> it, when I was uh, sophomore year of high school, I watched this 2020 episode about this woman, these people who have TMJ, and they were trying to look at other devices to help with their um, lock, locking jaw issues, and I thought it was fascinating, and so that's when I got really interested in medical devices, and that's kind of where I focused all my career. I, my current position is the only position that isn't directly a medical device company. And so, mm -hmm. um, but, but I do think that, um, you know, like I really enjoy what I'm doing now and I've enjoyed everything in the medical device field. And, you know, I'd encourage anybody to go into that, especially if you're interested in, you know, kind of having a, I, I don't know, there's something amazing about going to a surg surgical suite and seeing somebody using a device that you designed. And you know how it works and how it was produced, and you're sitting there, and you're just cut, your fingers crossed. You're like, okay, I hope it doesn't fail. <laughs> I really and, hope uh, this person doesn't die right now. <laughs> I know, I know. Thankfully, it wasn't like it was more like I hope they don't go blind. But <laughs> but it, it is an amazing feeling to know that what you're working on has affected the life of people in in a way that is, you know, helping people one by one. Obviously, other fields you'd be looking at more global changes. Like if you're doing aerospace, obviously you'd be helping. A, a bigger group of people doing other things, but I wanted more of a direct impact in like in their in their daily lives. So. Yeah. So, you, like, how? Why do you think you had such a strong pull towards engineering when you like that's at a really young age? Because like, I am going to be super honest and say that like I really didn't know shit about engineering until I got to college. Like, I didn't really know what engineers did because I. Even though like my dad was one, he wasn't working in the field. He'd been out of the field for a long time. So I mm -hmm. had no real idea of what like what the what was it like, you know, daily for an engineer? What exactly did they do? I, and kind of I had no idea. Like my my dad was an accountant and my mom was, you know, <laughs> she became a hairdresser eventually, but she was a you know, stay at home mom for a long time. Yeah. And but I just liked watching her fix things and like was she wasn't afraid to take things apart. And yeah. then um I would say probably my first introduction to um, engineering was like probably a drafting class I took. Ah. So I took a drafting class and was really, I liked making straight lines and like, making things match and doing, like it made me happy. It was all pencil and you know paper, you know? Yeah. I was really good at it. And then I took some architectural classes and then I was like designing cars for fun. Like 
<laughs> and yeah. then, but then in the end, um, and then I was really interested in space, but I didn't really know much about what they actually did. I just wanted to be a part of that. Cool. And, but it was really, but with the medical device, I think just knowing there's a field of, of engineering that is designed to help people that I was like, oh, that really just kind of triggered like this passion in me. And so everything that I did in college, after college was towards, you know, getting, having a bigger impact and having more direction with, um, I, I, and as I get older, it's more like interesting devices, yes, but I want to have more, be able to have more say in the direction of the company and the projects people worked on. Yeah. And so um, that's something that I'm still really interested in and having impact on is like, is knowing that I, you know, some opinions I have about where we should go in our product build releases and projects we work on um, that I can make impact on that. Obviously with my current company, I just started, like I'm two and a half months in. So like, yeah. I'm, there's so much for me to learn because it's much more biology related than anything I've ever worked on. Yeah. So Cool. Always fun when there's like a ton of stuff to learn. Yes. Yeah. Okay, should we start? Okay. <laughs> I know. So I tend to start. So th this board is, let's see, I'll see if we can zoom in here. So it's all like one side. Mm -hmm. And uh, so components are all on one side. Uh, it's interesting. There's like no copper at all on that side. So it's like single, single clad board. And um, who are we getting an echo? Oh, that is weird that I'm getting an echo for the first time, huh? Slightly different setup. Okay, hopefully that s solved it. Um, okay, so yeah, with boards like this, I like to start with the flattest components first, and then oh, we're still getting an echo. This is weird. From oh, their audios. we're getting feedback from it. Oh, interesting. Hey, Bibiana, is one of your devices? Hmm, interesting. Well, we'll see if it is bad. It seems to be gone now. I'm just, I'm curious if one of your, um, if one of your camera devices is, has their speaker on. Well, it's how she has. No, both of them do, sorry. Oh. <laughs> one of them that's not supposed to does. So but I have my mic and speaker turned down on my cell phone. Okay. And then I have my mic turned on, on on my camera. Okay. Is the speaker on on the camera? It should be off. Okay. All right. Well, we'll hopefully not have not have issues. I can't quite tell where that echo was coming from, but we'll track it down if it happens again. Okay. So, um oh, hey Jason, how's it going? Nice to see ya. Um so yeah, I like to do the lower things first and then like build up because that tends to be easier when you like flip it over to solder to keep things in place and solder it. Um, so I would start with resistors. Okay, there's four. Okay, so I did not prep ahead of time. So I'm just gonna have to have Carrie guide me. <laughs> oh, you think I prepped? <laughs> you should, I, I'm assuming prepped. <laughs> Cause you actually printed something out. I did, I did. So we have our one, two, three, four, and five. And um, they don't have, we have um, two, let's see, I'll put it up here. Two, up, we have two pairs. Yeah, two pairs and then a single. Yep. And, um, but they don't have the values printed on the actual circuit board. So nope. I'm going to look here at our component listing. All right, so, and do we have the values? Printed. We do not. All right. So we're going to cheat. Yes, please. And use a multimeter. <laughs> the one with the little grabby guys would be good. Um, because we can. <laughs> and we'll see which ones are which. And then I'll let you know. Okay. Um, I didn't bring my multimeter with me. The, the single one is a two mega ohm. And that's going to be R2. So we can start with that one. Okay. Cool, thank you. Um, I am always of the opinion that the color codes are too damn hard to read, especially on blue backgrounds, to bother with them. 
So, yeah, it's not a sign that we're getting old, really. Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> probably. All right. So I have like a dark blue pair and a light blue pair. Dark okay, blue. I slightly darker blue that has yeah. one black band in the middle. In the middle. Yeah, yep. and like red or orange to either side, kind yep. of. Yeah, that's 20K. Okay. So that is R1 and R3. So I'm going to put those guys in there now. It's bottom on the bottom, right? Yeah. Okay. I think the last time I made a, was <laughs> made a kit was when I was doing um, your vote one with Brady. Oh, yeah. How did he like that one? He did. He liked it. I'm actually going to probably get some more kits for the kids to do now that I have a full setup. Well, we might, and and this is this is hot off the press. Oh, breaking ooh. news, never, never divulged anywhere else. We might be trying to get something cool in time for Halloween. That oh, that'd be fun. Yeah, yeah. And by we, I mean Robin. She's she's 100 <laughs> percent doing that. <laughs> cool. Okay. And then okay. the other ones are. <laughs> yeah, Bob is saying old, old school to read the schematic and resistor color codes or DMM, right? <laughs> I know none of none of the new wave of helpful printing the printing the values on the uh, actual PCB. All right, the other one is four. Really? Yeah. Okay, four hundred and sixty-five ohms, which is like close enough to four seventy ohms, which is what the instructions said it was going to be, and that's R4 and R5. Awesome. Yeah. So how did you end up coming to MUD? <laughs> um, you didn't know you wanted, you weren't sure about the sciences. I was sure about sciences. Okay. I just didn't know about, I just didn't really have any good concept of what engineering entailed and what engineers did. Mm -hmm. And like, you know, other than like build stuff, which seemed very, I don't know, uh, nebulous to me, <laughs> right? Because yeah. I had no idea about how anything was manufactured at that point in time, really. And we didn't have like, we didn't have shop in school. We didn't have a machine shop. Um, yeah, so, uh, like my, my mom um, was very into woodworking and turning and I had done like a little bit of that with her. Mm -hmm. Um, but other than that, I didn't really have any, uh, visibility into how things were made. So, um, so yeah, I like engineering was on the list because it like sounded kind of interesting, but I didn't know, but I knew it was either going to be sciences or engineering and, um, I'm going to switch because I'm going to solder under the microscope. Ha ha. Um, and so, yeah, so I knew new science and, you know, this was back in the pretty much pre-internet days. So the way that people learned about different schools was through those like top 50 colleges of blah, oh, blah, blah, books, right? Barron's, yeah. Barron's books. So um, we got some of those. Um, actually, somebody handed them down to us um, because again, like lived on an island. So those were not very prevalent. Um, so yeah, somebody in, from the previous year, like their parents handed us down a whole bunch of like college prep books and stuff. And yeah, that was super cool. And like mud was in it and the freaking description for mud was so darn funny that I was just like, oh my God. Okay. We were going to go to California anyway. And, um, to look at Stanford. And so I was just like, we got to check this place out. Cause it was all about like Foster's donut runs and unicycles and shit. Oh, so. <laughs> yeah. So that's how, that's how I got to be. And, and actually um, it kind of coincidentally um, there was a guy four years ahead of me who went to mud from. Oh, school, okay. It was, yeah. Pretty surprising. And so the headmaster actually knew about mud and he's the one that suggested it too. So, cause he knew that I was into science and math and stuff. Mm -hmm. But then when I got to mud, like, even though I was very, even though I excelled in my very small pond, <laughs> it was, um, 
yeah, I got my ass kicked left and right and up and down and sideways. <laughs> Compared to everybody else, I felt like I had so few opportunities uh, and experiences and just had like so much catching up to do. Even though I took all of the AP courses that I possibly could, right, and mm -hmm. did really well on the AP exams and stuff like that, it was still just like a huge, huge ego crushing <laughs> blow. <laughs> so what what was it like when you got to mud? Like, did what did you did you like feel prepared well, for? Oh my god, the first week, yeah, for orientation, yeah, they were like, I don't remember some of the large quantity of kids valedictorian and i was not valedictorian i was like oh my god oh like, yeah you were you know this, we have the cream of the crop here and um are you all done like, I, like it's been so freaking long since i should really practice over the weekend that's all i'm gonna yeah. say ah <laughs> uh, it's fine i can't it's get a stupid ball to stay uh you can tape the board down to the board to the table i forgot to and i mean i can't get this like mm -mm. Uh, okay, it's melting, it became a ball, but it's not sticking on the board. Okay, so are you touching the tip of the, are you actually touching the pad with the tip of your iron? Because like, I am not. Okay, yes, that's what you got to do. Heat has to, solder will flow to where the most heat is. So touching the pad and the lead with the tip of your iron and then adding solder. I'm trying, trying to see and give advice, peering at the screen here. <laughs> okay, I got that one. Come on. Did that help? I think so, yes. Also, if you have um, flux, you can try adding some flux. So yeah, it, um, yeah, it was like a kick in the butt for sure. I did bridge, remember? Yeah. Oh, you did bridge. You see, I should have done bridge. Yeah, I really should have. <laughs> it was interesting. I don't know if bridge necessarily prepared me any more. I guess. I mean, the thing was, I kind of had the system down a little bit, but um, yeah. Well, but didn't you also take like CS the first CS class? So so bridge was a program that. Um, that was like how many weeks was it a a month oh wow yeah that's why i didn't do it so um yeah bridge was a program that was like a month long and it was for incoming freshmen and um it was basically it gave you like a little bit of a introduction to mud and a leg up and you did like basically the first cs class right during that yeah. time so they did a computer science class and so and that would have really helped me because I did super shitty in computer science. <laughs> I had never done anything even remotely like C before. And so I was just like, what is this? Oh um, yeah. My anything compiled. I had no idea what the compile errors meant. Uh, it was like, <laughs> Robin's, Robin's laughing next to me, shaking her head like, yes, I have that feeling. <laughs> I totally have that feeling. So yeah, I, I struggled hard in that. That was no, definitely. yeah, I, but you know what's funny? It's like I wish I'd taken more computer science class in college. Uh, yeah, now me too, kind of. Even though I did do, um, I did do CS five, and I didn't need to, but I don't know. I didn't. I it wasn't that relevant actually. Um, we had to make this terrible game called Walrus, which was like tetra text based, like ASCII art Tetris, but coming from both sides and disappearing in the middle. Yeah, no, yeah, that was me too. I was like, nope, nope. Honestly, I still wouldn't know how to program that shit. <laughs> Give me a microcontroller and I can totally make it do stuff. But like, oh man, just like programming for the sake of programming. I'm just like, mm. <laughs> but okay. So, so mud happened and you were, but you were already set on the engineering path kind of by then. So you, yeah. Yeah, you pretty much knew that 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 was going to be a ranger. Yes, because at at Mud where we went, we went to Harvey Mud College, and um, 
<laughs> Bob says he earned a BS in computer science slash math and his first language was PL slash one. I don't even know what that is. Like that's a new, a new old one for me. I mean, I remember like basic and what was it like logo? Fortran. Fortran. Yeah. A little bit of Fortran. I'm not even familiar with PL1. You know, tell us more about that, about that language in the comment, Bob. Comments, Bob. Okay, I think I got so, all of them. So yeah, so you were just all like, uh, get get like get me through this core curriculum so that I can get to the good engineering stuff. Yes. And so <laughs> the clinic was awesome. Um, yeah. E4. E4, I loved. Yeah. E4 is a freshman engineering course where you Software, had to right? No, no, E54 e is what I think. E54 was awesome. Yeah, yeah. E4, I think, was second semester freshman year. Yeah. And um, and we were basically, like, given a project and we had to, like, build something. And there were, like, three projects for the whole class. Everybody was split off into little teams. And so there was a little bit of, like, a competition aspect to it in, like, who could come up with, like, the coolest way to solve this problem. And 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 ours was masks. Coincidentally, that is hilarious. Trying to, trying to make more comfortable surgical masks. <laughs> oh my god, that's yeah. I don't remember that. Right? I was I've been thinking like I've been thinking so much about that E4 project in the last year. <laughs> I don't honestly remember anything about my E4 project. <laughs> uh, I remember. Oh my! You know, one of the hardest classes I took was the metallurgy class. Oh yeah, with King. King, yep. Yeah. And uh, of course, I waited till the last minute to machine everything. <laughs> and I remember. <laughs> guess, guess who hasn't yet finished her metallurgy project and just needs to be blast some shit? <laughs> Are you serious? Oh my god, that's hilarious! I know. I I really I really need to finish that. I don't have a bead blaster, but I know people with bead blasters, and I need to like hit up somebody with a bead blaster and just like bead blast that shit and like dig up his address and send him one. <laughs> Oh my God, that's hilarious. <laughs> yeah. So how did you feel? How did you feel going into the all of the engineering core classes, I guess, in terms of like prepared or over your head? Or were there any in particular that you loved or hated or struggled with? I it was all I really felt like I was I mean, like I love STEM so much, right? Mm -hmm. And it's so funny because and STEM and, is systems engineering for for non mutters who are watching. I'm sorry. The if, if, about, if you actually talk about systems engineering now, it's yeah. nothing like what we did. So for a while, I'd be like, "Oh, systems engineering, looking for jobs," but it's all about requirements and looking at the overall um, product requirements and how to match them. So you're looking at a system that way. Uh -huh. So it's not what we were interested in was control engineering, which was you know right. Yes, yeah. I, I learned after college that what we did was controls. <laughs> Not everybody else called it controls. I know. For some reason called everybody it. else called it, and I'm like, oh, that's yeah. anyway. It was confusing for me when I was looking for jobs because I didn't. I was one. Of, I, I was one of the. There's a, a handful of people that didn't have anything lined up after they graduated, and I was one <laughs> of those people. And and thank Bob, you were because when my shit hit the fan. <laughs> There was a couch to crash on. Or behind, <laughs> actually. <laughs> and then we all moved to Simi Valley. Yeah, and then we all moved to Simi Valley. <laughs> okay, what's next? <laughs> all right. Um, so I am putting in the um what is that? I think it's like a little um is it a beeper? I don't know. MK Oh, it's a little mini speaker thingy? Yeah, microphone. It's a little microphone. Mm, I saw it earlier. Where did it go? So I'm doing that because it's maybe a little taller than some of the other stuff, but not by too much. Um, the LEDs are pretty tall. The capacitors are pretty tall. So I think I'm going to do that one. Or actually, you know what? I'm going to do the IC next. U1. Oh, my okay. U1 is a little bent. I'm going to straighten out. Straighten out its little legs. Okay, which direction does it go? Uh -huh. So the little um, the little notch should match to the notch in real life. Oh, got it. Yeah. So and it might be a little. You might have to like just kind of 
ever so gently bend the legs on one side in order to get them in because they're mm -hmm. splayed a little. But yeah, it should look like that. So had you actually, so then you took shop in high school? I took, um, I took an auto, a, a, like a car, sh auto class, auto shop mm, class. That's so, so cool. Yeah. Well, except it was like not really car car, but it was just working on engines. So we brought a motor, uh, a lawnmower in, mm -hmm. took it apart, clean out all pieces and put the pistons back, you know, everything back in and it nice. didn't work. But my only, it didn't work before I took it in. So it's not like I broke it, mm -hmm. but I was very sad that it didn't work when I put it out, took it back out. And it was at the very end of the school. Otherwise I would try to fix it, but mm. didn't really have a need for it anyway. So just let it be. <laughs> I can't find my, my speaker. What's that? I can't find my little speaker thingy. Oh, I think it's, uh, it's right there by your hands, by the, by the pile of, um, by the pile of uh, things. It's this here, this guy. Oh, this one. Okay, I got it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that guy. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm gonna solder in the IC first though. Yeah. Cool, and so- Do you think I should have a finer tip? Um, maybe it can be, well, that one, that looks pretty good. Anyway, I'm not, I mean, obviously I'm going to take it off now, but yeah. The other thing you can try to do is like try to use the sides of the tip of the iron because that'll transfer heat more effectively than like the very, very tip. Okay. Um, yeah, you're and you're doing a good job like bracing with your fingers and stuff like that. So yeah, that's good. Is the um, solder flowing to the iron pretty well? It's not really. Hmm. Maybe you turn up the heat on your iron a little bit more okay because that's at 800 right now yeah that should do it but um for the lead free stuff but try to turn it up a little more it also might be like um the a new tip can sometimes like be kind of oxidized especially you know yeah for you know kind of cheap cheap irons cheap tips um so you can cr try like kind of aggressively um, um, kind of cleaning it with yeah. the brass wool. I'm doing that right now. Yeah. Uh, scratch it up. Yeah. So if I remember right too, when we were there, um, the, fir the very first biomedical engineering class was taught at MUD. Yes, it was pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like tissue engineering. There's a lot of, it's funny because I'm actually a really, really anti biomedical engineering degree person. Right. Yeah. So um, it was We're an interesting class for sure, but it's like right. you don't actually go in depth in anything. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like to be a good engineer, it's hard to be a good engineer in a specific area if you're not getting a lot of depth in any specific field of engineering if you're a biomedical engineer. And as, it's not very transferable. Rat. Yeah, as an undergrad, right? Yeah. Yeah. So what kind of things, is, and also didn't, I want to say for biomedical, for the biomedical class, weren't there prereqs? Didn't you already have to have like electronics and mechanics and stuff like that? I can't remember. I mean, I remember taking it close to junior, senior year. So there might have been some prereqs. But one of the more interesting classes I took actually was a biophysics class. So it's about oh. mechanics and physics of the body, of what? the bones and like how much impact it can handle. So that, that was actually taught at, um, I think it was at CMC. Oh, wow. That's super interesting. Cool. Yeah, it wasn't on campus. Wow. Okay, so for for people who are listening who are, who are unfamiliar with like with the um, Claremont Colleges and like Harvey Mudd College and stuff. So we went to Harvey Mudd College and Harvey Mudd College is part of the Claremont Colleges, which is a consortium of five colleges that all have adjoining campuses. So they kind of make up one like mega campus. 
And um, at I, I don't know if this is still the case, but at the time that we were there, you could basically cross register into any class at any college you wanted, um, like as long as there was enough space in the class. So, um, so yeah, you could take classes at any of the other colleges. And, you know, most of us took humanities courses at other colleges, but it's, it's a little bit rare to have taken a science course at another college. And oh, I, think was, Mona, I think. Oh yeah, that would make sense. That would make sense. So I'm, that's interesting that a comparable, was it that a comparable class wasn't offered through like the biology department or anything? It was not because biology is mostly focused on cell biology. Yeah. And not a, you know, body anatomy type of right, class. Right, right. And they might be now, I guess. I have no idea what it's offered through curriculum now. I, I feel like Pomona might've had a pre-med program too. No, oh, they did. Yeah. So, okay. That makes, that makes more sense. Yeah. Cool. So first job cool. outside of college. So, so tell, tell us a little bit, because I know that there are people out there who struggle with job searching, <laughs> oh, man. So, right? Like, and it's, it's tough because, you know, the line that you're fed, I think a lot of times is like, oh, go to this prestigious school and then you'll totally get a job. It'll be easy to get a job right out of college. And that's not always the case. I mean, it's hard for me to get a job right out of college, too. Um, well, it didn't help that MUD at that time was so not very well known. <laughs> yes. Yes, that didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's better now, I, hear. I remember when I got my first job, I think it was a temp job at Medtronic or Mac mini med at that time. Right. And they bought, okay. got purchased by Medtronic. Right. But um, it was a temporary position as a mechanical engineer. And, you know, I think right. a lot of times you kind of have to do what you need to do. Internships and co-ops are great. And I wish I'd taken advantage of that more in college. Yeah. Um, because I <laughs> like my summer job was at the university, which isn't really the best place if you want to go into industry. So <laughs> I would probably focus more on getting jobs and internships. And co-ops are amazing for that too. Yeah. In, in places that you have ex get extra, you know, experience in the workplace. Yeah. Because oftentimes they actually have a like an avenue for you to be able to start work there as a you know an intern. Yeah. My problem was that I hated my internship and wanted no part of working there full time. <laughs> oh, what did you intern at? I can't remember. Uh, I summer interned at McDonnell Douglas the oh, the yeah. summer that it became Boeing. Oh, then Irvine. Yeah, down at um, Huntington Beach at like their space systems place. Yeah. Which I mean, that was pretty cool being able to like more or less run amok in little electric carts around a giant place that was built basically a factory for like space stuff. Uh, that was kind of cool. That was kind of cool. And like, of course, me being young and female, people loved to talk to me. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, and you know, hell yeah, I, I took advantage of that because it was fun to learn about all of the things that were going on there, you know? Um, but, but yeah, it was also my first experience with like, it was, you know, a huge company and there's a ton of bureaucracy. There were like union politics and stuff going on. And, and it was just very rigid and regimented, you know, like there was, like I could sort of get some time with machine um, like with this like tiny sort of prototyping machine shop that was like next door to the lab that I was working at. Uh -huh. And um, I could only sort of do that without anybody like complaining because I was a college intern. If I had yeah. been a full engineer, then I, we would have had to like go through the main shop and it would, it would like a union person would have had to have performed that work. Yeah. And, um, and, you know, I am, I am definitely in support of a lot of that in support of unions, but it was like, there was also a practicality that just was not there. Right. Because I was talking about doing incredibly simplistic machining, like machining operations, you know, drilling holes and things like, cutting roughly the right shape out of a piece of aluminum. Um, I was, you know, I was doing things that needed maybe like an hour or two of time. And, you know, that was me doing it. So I was slow um, and like very simple things. And the, the main machine shops, like 
it was just like way too small of a job and they were totally backlogged and stuff like that. So, you know, I was in the position of like having to do it myself or having to wait for like a month or two and then my internship would have been over. Right. Yeah. So yeah, there were a lot of like sort of bureaucratic things like that, that were just incredibly inefficient and it drove me nuts. It totally drove me nuts. So yeah, no, I remember that. I mean, that's, that's true to a lot of bigger companies because they, you know, not only just union, but they want to make sure nobody's getting hurt using the equipment too. But it's interesting. I feel like prototyping has like changed so much since we were that age, you know, like yeah. with the advent of 3D printing, all these like additive technologies that's coming to place. You can actually design up, design features. You can ever actually machine. I mean, there's some really cool stuff coming down the pipeline. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm just taking a break to look at the comments here. So, okay, PL1 means programming language one. I love it. <laughs> so high level like C, but mainframe oriented. And so he says that CS students took PL1, business students took COBOL, and engineering students took Fortran. <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious. That sounds about right. Um, and our, our systems engineering controls sounds like industrial engineering. Maybe we didn't really have that but industrial engineering nowadays it's more about design of functional stuff like yeah yeah us it was very much about like um you know identifying like resonances and mechanics and um and kind of using the same it, using the same type of um analysis methods on mechanical and electrical systems was a lot of what it focused on i would say no i agree i mean and the fact that's the that was a fascinating part was that yep. any system any mechanical electrical chemical system or not chemical per se but i guess electrical fluidic systems right could yeah you go down to an equation that you could actually translate in, into any language like water yep. flow rate is the same as current which is the same as you know like just just that they could all be correlative together was part that I was like, oh my goodness, like mathematically, it's all the same. Right. It was a lot of transfer functions and mm -hmm. Fourier transforms and Baudet plots. Ah, uh, Baudet plots. Baudet plots. Yeah. Fortunately, I haven't had to deal with a ton of them. <laughs> it's not my, it's not the kind of engineering that I do. Uh, cool. So, so tell us about your first job at Minimed. Like what, what is it that you were working on and what, what was like your progression from there and like what in the different devices that you've worked on? Oh, okay. So at Minibed, we worked on insulin pumps. So I was helping with some of the design features they added in one of the, you know, they, they'd have this implantable pump, which had a reservoir that would release very high concentrations of insulin into your body. And so they wanted to make sure they can control the flow and kind of, slow down things they're pushing it out pretty quickly so they had designed these titanium bellows to slow down the flow rate so that they can actually get quick filling in that reservoir as it's pulling out because it's like in this really weird angle hmm. so that's how they hired me for that and then they stuck around they, they liked me enough to keep me around and worked on like some of the piezoelectric transistors for warnings so that the the uh, your user will be able to tell if there's a noise coming through. So we would actually like to replicate how well the sound would trans transfer through human skin. We would, we would like go buy pig skin <laughs> and we just put it on. We got the spectrum analysis out to make sure we can actually hear it through whatever, you know, layers of skin there would be on top of this insulin pump. Uh -huh. And so I did that. That's amazing. <laughs> and then designed some fixtures for that. And I was getting into more clinical studies and doing some evaluations with animals. And then I moved to St. Louis. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Bibiano, why did you move to St. Louis? <laughs> I moved to St. Louis for love. And um, I had been dating um, a fellow alum and he was going to, he was living in St. Louis as a, and he was in St. Louis doing a medical school slash PhD program. And um, I think if it was a short program, I probably would have just done a long distance relationship, but I knew he was going to be there for at least, at least six years. Yeah. So, um, and I am by no means an emotional person <laughs> other than anger. I can do anger pretty well. But I, <laughs> I don't like to cry. I, I mean, like, I just don't like to be that emotional. And 
God, traveling back and forth and being in this long distance relationship was so, so emotionally difficult. And yeah. so it got to a point where I'm like, okay, this is it. I'm giving myself six months to find a job over there. If it doesn't happen, then we're done. Like, I can't, this, this emotional roller coaster, I just can't handle it. <laughs> and so, and I felt bad for the guys, like people sitting next to me at the airplanes, I'm like literally bawling. And I'm that awkward person, they're like, <laughs> like, you? you know like, anyway it was awful and um i was able to find a job a, working for a company that was a, kind of a startup company that did um radiation therapy prostate cancer therapy um and so they basically have this prostate cancer can be um treated in multiple ways the easiest early, when you catch it early enough you do radiation therapy and there's like seed therapy and then there's needle therapy where Seed is like low dose radiation, it gets left behind, it vibrates, you, it comes out of your body. With high dose radiation, they actually stick needles into your prostate <laughs> while the patient was lying there for about an hour. <laughs> and so I was making this template that would be a, a, a way to, like, so you can end it, you can figure out where the needles are going in, in, in <laughs> respect to the, um, the probe that was in the anal cavity. And while it was imaging the prostate, the needles would go in and you can actually identify where the needles are and then you can do radiation therapy where it needs to be. Wow, and were were people awake through that procedure? Um, I think they might've been, I, I don't know. I think they might've been awake because it's only like an hour long. So they probably were like general like anesthesia. An hour long of a needle <laughs> in the prostate. Dude, that does not sound like an only an hour kind of thing. I don't know, you have babies and like, you're, it's not like they knock you out for the baby. They could have maybe given you a, like, a, like a local anesthesia, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, I worked on that for about six months before the company went uh, bankrupt. <laughs> Oh. Yeah. No, I was just like, oh. Yeah, they're like, <laughs> um, we'll one more month, and that's it. I'm like, oh no. And so after that, I was a, I found a job working for a company that made dental products, and so they would make um, profi angles, basically cleaning cleaning supplies for um, your like bi yearly appointments. So one, they actually became popular, and they started making really good money. Um, they became really profitable after the AIDS, that when the AIDS epidemic started. And there was a case of this dental hygienist who had AIDS that transferred to their patient. Oh. And, um, or maybe it was within patients that came out because it, it was all reusable back then. Right. And yeah. so we actually, the company had actually produced, the, they were manufacturing a single use versions of their profangles. And so that just like sales went up. And so we had a pretty big share in market for disposable profi angles. Hmm. So I was there for a couple years working on some new product development. Um, and then I really wanted to go back and get my degree yeah. in, in electrical engineering. Cause I was really, that's kind of where I thought I'd be really interested in doing control stuff. Mm -hmm. And, but they were like, no, I don't want to pay for your education. So I was like, well, then I'm going to start looking for a new job. And <laughs> I got a job at Washington university in St. Louis in their, research area, medical school, mm -hmm. um, lab. And I worked there during the day and went back to school and got my master's there. And I think that was around the time uh, Brandon and I got married. Mm -hmm. And um, I like we stuck around long enough basically um, to finish my school for him to be get done with his classes. And then we moved back to, we moved to Seattle where I'm from. Yeah. But that was also, didn't he get matched in Seattle or something? He had not officially. Oh, oh really? So the, the, it was like, I'm like, Brandon, I hope you really match in Seattle because that's where I'm going to be with the baby. <laughs> <laughs> and so we moved to Seattle um, <laughs> to have the baby here and uh, to be closer to home and hoping that he actually finished some of his, he did some rotations in Seattle too. So he got to know the people here too. Yeah. And, Brandon's like a super smart guy. He got all, he basically chose Seattle and they wanted him. So oh, good. next year without an issue. So cool. But, um, but yeah, so, and then um, when I got to Seattle and had the baby, I didn't have anything lined up and I took, I don't know, probably like nine, five months off, six months off before I was, start, I started looking for a job because I was getting bored. Yeah. But 
it was really super tough I like being a mom just because like I assumed that I'd be like mm, whatever I'm gonna go on a trip I'll leave the baby behind for a couple days I'll be fine literally the, he was five years old like he was like he was four or five years old before I actually spend the night away from him <laughs> No way. <laughs> and I was crying. I'm, like, I'm, not, I'm not emotional, <laughs> but. <laughs> and um, oh my, my mother in law would make fun of me. She'd be like, You have that, you get pregnant, and then that mom gene turns on. And I was like, <sighs> So I think that I probably should have practiced take going away from him earlier because mm. it shouldn't have been that traumatic. <laughs> but um, anyway, so that. Now it's like, now I'm like, oh, I have a business trip. Yay. Right. I know. It, it's, that's so funny to me because like, yeah, that is, that is definitely not the Bibiana. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah. And so I worked at a company called Physio Control that made um, defibril external defibrillators. Mm -hmm. So I, I started off as a mechanical engineer in their quality control, quality department. And then I went on vacation and came back and they're like, Ooh, I would like you to be a quality engineer because you're good with people. And I'm like, damn it. No, <laughs> but I stuck around for a couple of years doing that. Mm -hmm. I know I stuck around for about a year doing that, but then at that point I got pregnant again. And then I was like, okay, I can't like, it was in being a quality engineer for a company that's um, in consent decree. There's FDA, there's tons of attention by like, all these people, there's line, the lines down all the time. I had to work on weekends. It was really stressful. And um, I, I remember telling my boss, who's this like burly Texan guy, and I was like, and I started crying. I was like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm pregnant. And he was like, oh, well, baby, you should be happy. And I'm like, I am happy. <laughs> and I tried my best. And I just, I feel like I'm not, you know, doing a good job because like that was important to me to do a good job. <laughs> and he's like, he felt bad. And he was like, Vivian, you're doing fine. Like, don't stress out. And I think he didn't know how to it, react to that, honestly. Yeah. Yeah. Dear, but, dear um, yeah. Lights, I'm sure. Right. Like, yeah. Oh, and, crying woman. Ah, what yeah. do I do? <laughs> and so um, I had the opportunity to come back after I had the baby, but I was, I didn't, I, I couldn't, I just couldn't do it because Brandon was starting his fellowship. Yeah. And it would have been, it would have been me just taking care of the kids by myself while working full time. And I, yeah. I didn't think I was emotionally in a place to be able to handle that. Yeah. So I took about two years off between, yeah. like, I just, they wouldn't hire me part time. Yeah. And, and I didn't want to try to find daycare. Daycare is super expensive. I can't, like, you have to, like, honestly, in Seattle, I don't know if it's, it's like that in other cities too. Like, you have to be getting on list before you get pregnant. Because these wait lists are insanely long. Yeah, that is crazy to me. That is totally crazy. And like, I can't even imagine having a baby now. Like, I talk to people who have babies, and I'm like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> like, because you don't have, like, I was talking to this guy, and he's like, he had a seven month old baby. And as he's like, oh, do you have any kids? I'm like, I have two. And he's like, wow, you have two of them? And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I have two kids. And he's like, I can't even think about having another one. I'm like, First of all, the baby's still pretty young. Like there's not a lot of good interaction that you have with babies that age. A little bit, but not that much. And second of all, it's COVID. Like all the all the support system you could have had with your friends coming over or with your family coming over, like it's not there. So um, I can see why it would be stressful to have a baby and not have the support that you would normally have. Yeah. And have to worry about the fact that your kid might get sick at any second, you know? So I I, I totally feel for them. Yeah. But yeah, so um, I took a couple years off, and then when Brady was start, ready to start kindergarten, he was five. He, he just turned five, and Blake was just turning two. I was like, okay, I have to go back to school because um, I had kept Brady in daycare part time, mm -hmm. and like I said, the wait list is really insane. And so the only way I can make sure that Blake would have a position in the daycare that he, his older brother was at was if I got him in, in at the same time because siblings oh, have priority. Right. So oh, nice. I was like, I don't know if I'm going to have a job then, but Blake is going in. Yeah. <laughs> so I was able to find a job working um, at the University of Washington. 
And they were super happy to have me because I had ex like experience in making stuff and they were looking for somebody, they were looking at commercializing and doing some research on a uh, hydrocephalus device, basically. Hydrocephalus is a condition that people get, they're either, it's either um, they're born with it. And so that would mean additional fluid build up in your brain. So you have additional pressure in your brain. Yeah. And with, with little kids, their brain's not fused yet. So their head just keeps on spreading Smelling. out and like they'll have these big heads, right? Ugh. And then if they adults have it, they have to actually put a hole into their brain. So like serious brain trauma, right? Yeah. Then you have swelling in the brain. So yeah. there's, there's, there's the, um, the fact that the, the brain is a solid piece of, you know, body that your brain is pushing against and you want to make sure the fluid, the pressure is relieved. And so they'll drill a hole in the back of your brain to relieve the pressure in the brain so there's no damage to either to the brain basically mm -hmm. so i was working on this like you know novel design this device to be able to use in the hospital setting and i did that for about a year and then um i got a and then also do some of that part-time too so it was like um it was great university it's like pretty low low pressure it's much different than working at um any in the industrial setting <laughs> but the people are really great and um it's interesting and like what why yeah. is that is that because like failure is more of an option or or what i would or say it's because different financial not as much financial pressure there's not as much financial pressure i mean grants obviously grants are running out but there's always more grants you can apply for mm -hmm. it's more of like they're looking at more capability studies mm. than actually trying to produce something like they do at medical right. devices like as companies mm -hmm. and it's funny because um i think that you get i, I think in, in academia it's about doing things over and over and over and over again until they succeed right yeah in, in a company if it doesn't work the first couple of times they're like okay we, this is out the out of scope of our our development process it's we yeah. can't spend any more money on it they just move on and so yeah. the mindset is quite different between the mm -hmm. two too. Did you already? Oh my God. I finally got my. It's hard, it's hard to talk all the time and solder at the same time. I know. Oh, yeah, thanks. thanks. <laughs> okay. So, this, what, what do you put next? Uh, what do you want? I just finished the IC. The IC. Okay. Uh, I would do the transistor and the microphone next. Microphone as the same length. So, I'm just putting it in. Yeah. And the transistor, yeah, you'll have to um, spread, you'll have to like splay out the legs a little bit. These three pieces, right? Yeah. And make sure that that's the right orientation according to the silk screen too. Yeah, it matches. Yeah. yeah. Um, does it go all the way through? It doesn't know because um, because the legs have to spread out a little bit. It'll the the body will sit just a little bit above the circuit board. Okay, that's, that's, okay. that's normal. Okay. So did you find? So it's it's interesting. So when you had um, when you had your first kid, you like changed jobs essentially. You yeah. like quit one job and then started another one. Um, but did you find at all like how how did that go with employers? I'm curious because I I'm you know I always hear other women. I don't have kids, but um, I always hear other women saying that like, oh man, it is it you know it's hard to get the flexibility that I need in order to you know take care of the kid and and you know do things do things for the kid as well as uh, you know as well as be at work and people don't expect me to like perform as well too. Like people tend to equate like eight to five butt in the seat with, you know, with high performance. And if you can't do that, if you need like a little bit extra flexibility in your schedule or whatever, then it's like, oh, you're not, you're not committed. And like, they get this, this attitude that they have to deal with. I'm curious if you experienced any of that, or if, you know, the, or if the places that you worked for already had kind of robust you know, maternity policies and things like that. It's, you know, it's interesting because um, I would say that I never really had to deal with that much 
like I don't know if like I might have mentioned I had kids, I guess, but it wasn't a question that, that obviously they're legally allowed to ask or, you know, like, right. but, um, with my first job after I had the baby, um, but like, I was very clear, like, Hey, I need to make sure I can find daycare for my son. Mm-hmm. Cause at that point I hadn't had anything lined up. I, I wasn't going to start looking for anything unless, you know, like I have to. Right. Yeah. And, um, and they were like the biggest thing for me was that Brandon was doing his hospital rotations, right? Right. Yeah. So four times a year, he would be at the hospital pretty much 24 seven. And I had to be like, so that was, I'm like, I had to be able to accommodate for my husband's schedule to take care of the kids. Like I'll, otherwise I'll be working from home and, and everything. And I would say with the first one, like they didn't have any issues. I think, okay. <laughs> So long ago, I don't remember them having many much issues. But with the second one, when I applied for the job, because mm-hmm. I was were already working at a job where I was working, you know, pretty low key hours, isn't very stressful. Um, and then you know that we had this other opportunity, and I was like, pretty much told them like, hey, I need to be able to work from home. I have kids, and I, you know, and honestly, I think that if, if it was any other company, I don't think I could survive because I would literally bring them to. Kids would be off school. I bring him home. I bring him to work, and they yeah. hang out in my office. Yeah. And even at the university when I worked there, like during the days that they have half days or whatever, I'd bring like to Brady to work with me, and he would play with the fluid line and like kind of get a sense of what it was like in the lab, you know. That's cool. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'd bring the kids with me, and they would hang out in my cubicle, and I'd have. Now, to was that stuff. something that other coworkers were already doing, or and like, did you just start doing that, I just or? Did it. Yeah, you just did it. <laughs> Didn't ask, just like, just did it. Yeah. No, because I was like, yeah, I don't remember. I, maybe I asked, I can't remember. I just started, I was like, oh, the kids have the day off. I'm going to be working half day. I bring, him, bring them in. And they, like, they didn't have any objections to it. So yeah. um, I'm sure that there was some, you know, it's, it's interesting in any company, there is like the engineers and then there's the manufacturer plant, the plant people, right? And mm-hmm. so I'm sure the people on the on the production floor were like, "Oh, Viviana, she gets to bring her kids to school, like while I have to slave away on you know on the production floor, and my kids, I have to find daycare for them, you know." So yeah. I feel, like I felt kind of bad, but I was so there's worried. definitely like you th- you think that there was maybe like you know some privilege accorded to oh, you yeah. and your status as an engineer versus somebody who is like working on the floor, yeah. Yes, yes, yeah. and I would say that. After that, though, I, I did, after I started bringing my kids, there's some other other women who are like accountants or whatever. There was not that many engineers in the group, but bring their kids to work too. Just for, cool. you know, for half a day or whatever, like nothing long. Yeah. And they were super quiet, so they just hung out in their little area. Yeah. And um, that was pretty normal, like for me growing up, like I would, you know, I would get off of school and, you know, for me, I would like get off of the boat, walk to my mom's office <laughs> and like, <laughs> do homework in her office for a couple of hours until you know she was done and it was time to go home yeah and like I know a lot of kids you know uh like that I went to school with um uh you know a lot of their parents were like working in retail or or owned small like retail shops and things like that and it was like everybody would go to their parents workplace for a few hours until until it was time to go home yeah no that makes sense I mean yeah, so um, so it would have been really hard for me to do. Oh man, I crossed the stupid beads. Yeah, <laughs> uh, but yeah, it would have been really hard if I couldn't bring them. I mean, I could, I could have made it work. I guess obviously they could always, I could always pay for daycare for them to have go somewhere else, you know. But mm-hmm. I always kind of felt bad. Like I don't know. It's a. Uh, I think being a working mom, there's always guilt. Hmm. that you're not doing enough you're not you're doing too much you know and um thankfully i had like making the, the boys made friends with a lot of other boys whose mom didn't work so <laughs> and, yeah and so they would like go over to their house and hang out with them while i was working so i felt less guilt about like doing my own thing and and they yeah. really enjoyed having my boys around because then they're like their boys are playing with other people and yeah. so they don't have to worry about them and like keep them amused right yeah. So it worked out. And I, I think that having the support, you know, at work a little, you know, just not having, not having people get on my case about it and be able to work from home and stuff when the kids were sick 
definitely made it worthwhile. And, and you know, as much as things ended on a bad note at my last job, my at MST, like they really allowed me to be a to balance work and um, home really well, especially close to the end. Nice. So I'm not gonna have any, you know, regrets about how how long I stayed in or anything like that, you know, even though I probably <laughs> stayed a little bit longer than I should have. <laughs> well, you know, as long as there were like good things about it. Yeah, it no, I know, yeah, for sure. Totally. I learned a lot, so. Totally. No, I, right. you know, I'm looking through the direction. Learned, it's pretty much that people are full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah yeah a common a common thing as it turns out <laughs> uh, all right so i'm reading i'm reading through the instructions here because i'm i think i'm pretty much done soldering this board there are these j1 j2 and j3 places which i'm not entirely sure what they're for i mean mm -hmm. i'm guessing that like we take a leg that we've clipped off and jump her over it um you know, make a little jumper and solder it in. But I don't know if it's like for selecting a mode or if it's actually part of the circuit since there are only traces on one side, if they make you like solder some jumpers to, you know, actually make the routing work. Um, okay. I hey, think so... it might be the latter. I think we might actually have to solder those in. So I'm trying to find the place in the instructions that might tell us something about that okay so i'm ready for leds i think all right so what about j1 um, and j2 what's what goes in there so yeah you see the so the leds have a long side and a short side mm -hmm. and there's a plus mark on the board yeah so long goes to plus okay I should probably double trip triple check that now that I've soldered them all in because like even though I know that I'm gonna get it wrong one of these days. I'm gonna get too cocky. <laughs> I'm gonna be super sad if this doesn't work. I'm looking at the, yes. the contacts long, and sure I don't have double. Yeah, long is indeed positive. Okay. Um yeah, so let's see. Looking at LEDs, LEDs, blah, blah, blah. Uh-huh. So they, they, they do spend a lot of time telling you which side is the correct side for the LEDs. That's good. <laughs> uh, so that's good. But um, transistor, microphone, capacitor. Uh-oh. What? It was supposed to be a special RGB LED at D11, and I have no idea which one of these was the RGB LED. <laughs> oh, wait, art. Oh, it might be a self flashing one. Why? We it only has two pins, so I'm a little confused right now. Hang on. Okay, so um, one of these is actually something D11 is something special. It says that D11 is something special. And I'm trying to work that out right now. So okay. the only types of RG, it says it's an RGB LED, but the only types of RGB LEDs that have only two legs are ones that like color are self color changing. So they have like a color changing circuit built in, um, which is why I didn't think that there were any like different LEDs here, right? Because yeah. they, they all had two pins, they all looked the same. There was none, none of them were like, uh, None of them were different really than any of the rest of them. Um, just looking at them under the microscope here to see if any There's of There's way more diodes than there are. You know, I wonder if they changed, I wonder if they changed the kit and now it's no longer an, a, like a special LED there. Because I mean, all of these look exactly the same to me. No, I agree. Um, <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll We'll find out when we power it up if one is a <laughs> is one of the. And you have extras. Yeah. I have five. I have four extras. I have three extras. Yeah. Huh. I'm just gonna like LED check these three that I have. Oh. Hey, I think I found the RGB LED. <laughs> 
What's it look like? It-, it looks exactly the same as all the other ones. Um, okay, hang on. Let me just let me let me <laughs> look at this one. Um, no, they all look like they're the RGB self flashing ones. Hang on. Um, let me let me go back and look at these guys. Yeah, I don't know why they. Oh no, ten pieces, five millimeter RGB LED. Yeah, they're all the same. Okay. They're, all the, same. they're the they're the self flashing type. I think this adds like you know coolness to it. Okay. <laughs> um. Ah, Bob, Bob asks if the LEDs provide some kind of power meter. I have no idea. I have not read the instructions yet. So, <laughs> so we're going to find out. <laughs> I, I don't know. I feel like they might just be for like ambiance for, you know, Bluetooth speaker coolness, but I'm not sure. D11 is my guess would be maybe like it's like an on off, like a power indicator or something. Um, maybe. Um, but yeah, I'm, it's unknown right now. Um, Oh, what, what, what kind of plots? So we were we were talking about Bode plots earlier, oh, yeah. which other people call something else weird. Um, uh, I don't know what it is. Do they call them like? I don't know. I don't know. We learned them as Bode. Um, I think other people pronounce that differently. Um. But like that was how it was pronounced across the board in our engineering department. So I'm going with Bode, B-O-D-E. Uh, I think some people like might say like Bodhi or something. Oh yeah, I've heard Bodhi plots. Bodhi, Bodhi plots, mm -hmm. yeah. Close, B-O-D-E, Bo Bode. Um, but basically like it's a plot that um, it can show you where a system, uh, like what, what parameters makes a system unstable and what parameters are like safe parameters to operate within. So it's basically like a way to, way to plot transfer functions, essentially, right? Kind yeah. of. Um, it's hard, it's hard for me to explain them in normal language because it's a lot of math. Um, it's a lot of upper level math. Yeah, I mean, I think it's like they trans. They basically have uh, any any system can be a black box, and yep. you can put signal signals in and see how they react on the uh, outer. You know how they react to those signals and determine what kind of function it has internally. So you can guess how it's going to react to other other um, other yeah. inputs, I guess. Yeah. So yeah, the overall idea is that like any system can be represented by some sort of equation that takes into account all of the system's properties. And so um, like the, the Bode plot lets you kind of visualize how if you change those system properties, how you change the response of the system. Um, so like, I don't know, what would be like a good practical example? It would basically like tell you like how changing the springs of like the spring tension on a trampoline would change the bounciness of the trampoline kind of a deal. I mean, the most classic way is how planes work how like you can change the altitudes and the direction of a plane by, you know, looking at how the airflow over the wings is going to affect, you know, the overall system and then excite, you know, look at the excitation and make sure that it's in a steady, you know, in, in a place where it's happy opposed to like going up and down and like yeah. causing it to crash. Yeah. Yep. So I'm super excited because at work, I'm going to learn to use Visual Studio. I've never oh, used it before. Cool. Nice. And uh, I'm setting up a LabVIEW project. So I am excited about doing some coding because I haven't done it in a long time. Oh, cool. Cool, cool. Yeah, I, I haven't used LabVIEW in a long time. <laughs> oh, I know. I'm like, yeah, I haven't used LabVIEW in ages. So I, it's going to be all new, learning new things. But <laughs> I feel like that's the one area. I'm like, the software development portion is the one area that I really don't have a lot of experience in. So I'm hoping to gain that here. Yeah, do it. Aha, install the extra pins from the LEDs at J1 through J3. So yes, we do have to bend over our leads, make make jumpers, <laughs> make jumpers ourselves and install them. So that's- Wait, um, you make jumpers from what? 
from the LED leads that we cut off. Oh my God. You solder them in. Yeah, because it's only a single layer board, right? Mm -hmm. And at a few places, those signals had to cross in order to route properly. So they're making us take care of those crossing signals. <laughs> the J1, J2, and J... J3. Yeah. <laughs> that was crazy. I love it. I love it. How to make things cheap. Well, this is only a $20 Bluetooth speaker kit. So, you know, maybe, okay. maybe the $30 one, like, <laughs> would you would have used a two layer board. <laughs> oh. Cool. So tell me now, so you have done, oh, this is interesting. I feel like these leads are kind of thick to go in or, oh, maybe this one just has some solder on it. I think it just has solder on it. There we go. Now it should fit. Um, so tell me about your thoughts about like being a like highly technical contributor versus manager and the things that you're thinking about with that right now. Cause I know that's also something that like a lot of people, you know, have, have trouble deciding like which way to go. Like, do they have to make a decision? Can they do a little bit of both? Um, I know, I, you know, I still on the fence about where I want to go. So yeah. I'm super excited because I'm going to be um, helping me mentor a group of college kids for a capstone project. Yay! And my boss's boss, the director, was like, I can't wait to see what you do with these kids. And I was like, oh, so that's going to actually make you see how good of a manager I am, too, I guess. It's, he's going he's gonna to use that as a gauge, I guess, hmm. which should be that's interesting. Thing. What if you get a bunch of dud kids? I know. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> And that's, I actually am worried about that. But the thing about it is the last time we did a capstone project with the University of Washington, mm -hmm. we hired three to five people. Oh, nice. Yeah. So I feel like I feel like that as anything, if anything, that's going to be like, dude, this is what happened. Like, if you yeah. get your shit in gear, then we can help you out, you know? Yeah. But we will have to see how that all works out. So the semester just started, so I don't think we're going to be seeing anything until um, I'm not going to know about any of the kids till later. Yeah. But no, I think um, I don't know. The higher you go up, the more meetings you have, and like the more <laughs> you have to deal with upper management. And I don't know how I feel about that. And like I think if you're going to be looking for a job, like that's the one thing that you just really have to. These things are pretty hard to put in. The jumpers, they use, yeah, they don't use yeah. these jumpers. Yeah, I'm like, you I'm think the, uh, use some flyers, and mine are not looking very pretty. I'm using the ones that are that came off of one of the resistors. You think it's too, too weak? Um, no, I mean it's it'll it'll be fine. Whichever. I I just grabbed what I grabbed. I didn't really. Oh, let me finish with my LEDs. But yeah, so um, but I still. It's interesting because I think um, it's still really rare to see women in a technical um, technical meeting, right? Yeah. And um, I'm super excited because I work with a you know a female engineer who's really she's on top of things, so it's been nice. fun to like understand what she, see what she's she's been dealing with because she's been with the company for a while now, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, like. That really, it's still pretty rare, which is unfortunate. And so yeah. I, that's where I'm like, well, if you can make an impact as a manager, then that'd be awesome too. Mm -hmm. But um, do you feel like I, think I can still do that as a mentor? Because I really do like being technical. Yeah. I just like having minions to tell people what to do. So I don't have to do all the like <laughs> gritty, gritty stuff, you know? Yeah, stuff. I was going to say, do you feel like if you pick a more managerial route that you'll like have more control over, I don't know, projects or the way that get, work gets done or what gets prioritized and things like that. I agree. And that's one of the reasons I would like, I think I still have to figure out how this company works first before I, you know, get really into that portion of it. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, no, I, I, I mean, that's the, the big thing I want is having more impact and having more, having more um, say in the, the direction of projects that are being worked on. Yeah. Yep. 
So, but I mean, I think you can still do that. Like the nice thing about the company that I'm working on now is they have a pretty intensive um, professional growth route for um, technical people. They go all the way to yeah. senior principal. Mm -hmm. Nice. So, and as a senior principal, you can still have people working for you. You just yeah. aren't, you know, dealing with the daily rut of being in meetings and talking to like, I don't know, like, Talking business is like, oh. <laughs> yup. <laughs> yup. Yeah. It, it's, it's interesting. I like, yeah, I like being technical, but I also like doing other stuff from time to time too. And like having an impact on direction. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So that's, I mean, that's one of the reasons I'm like, well, maybe we'll see how much I can, you know, learn from my current com company, but then mm -hmm. maybe eventually go, go back to, you know, small company setting again, where I can have a little bit more. Right. Of, of a broad, yeah, yeah, broad impact. And I think that's why I've always gravitated towards smaller companies too, because I like, I like being able to have that impact without that being my entire job. Right. Mm -hmm. So, Yeah. And then you just go crazy and like do your own company. <laughs> yeah, I am so not there. <laughs> uh, oh, interesting. So Bob says in his MBA, he learned sensitivity analysis for different variables. So like in, in a similar, similar thing to, you know, to like a stability, stability analysis for a system. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> he also says that you being good with people should should be an asset for your for the managerial side. <laughs> yes, I, I, yeah, I, I I think that um that definitely helps yeah. manage people like just in general like. But I, I mean, like honestly, though, I don't like people that much. I like people. <laughs> Well, there's, yeah, there's, there's the introvert extrovert war, right? Oh my goodness. Though I, okay. So I've always been, you know, you take those, Bright, the Briggs Meyer test, you know, mm -hmm. and I've always been like borderline. Uh huh. And what I've realized through a pandemic is that I'm way more extroverted than I think I am as I yes. built a covered deck in my backyard so that I can have people over. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I, I hear you there. Like I, I definitely love and need my alone time, but I can't live off of just that. Like no. that doesn't work for me. I need to be able to see friends under my own, like, you know, when I want to see friends, I want to be able to see friends. And if I can't do that, then that's, that makes me sad. Yeah. And I mean, which is the other reason, like I could, I, Anybody that's a great customer service people, like I applaud them because I can't imagine having to deal with all that day in day out. Yeah, I do a lot of customer service. Oh, sorry, I don't mind do it. Uh, it's actually, I, I have to say that my customers have like have not been that bad. Like I have rarely had an unpleasant customer service, like a really unpleasant, you know, person mm -hmm. that was just really refused to be reasonable and it's happened occasionally but it's pretty rare which i'm i'm happy about because <laughs> since you know yeah since there are only two of us here <laughs> <laughs> we we all do a bit of something so I, and I have to say, it's funny because i remember um one of the things that i my mom used to always get on my case about when i was younger was um she's like you need to be nicer to people <laughs> and so I like well, I she I, and it didn't help that my mom made me call all these people, but I have to do all these calls to help her set her business up. Oh, like, all the business bureau and all the stuff, and I'd be like, they'd call me back and I'd be angry because I have to deal with this. Anyway, my mom would be like, you need to be polite and be kind, and I think that goes such a long way, especially dealing with people even at work, right? Like mm -hmm. if you have a positive attitude, they can be grumpy, but. Like they're more willing to help you out than if you also have, you know, have a curmudgeon out outlook on life too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and a lot of times, like I have to remind myself that like, it's really, it's really not about me. Right. It's about, mm -hmm. 
you know, the frustration of the person whose like thing has like just stopped working. Right. Yeah. And yeah. stuff like that. And like, and I get that. I totally get that. And I totally get also that people ex like there's an expectation now that customer service is going to be a giant freaking hassle. Right. And that mm -hmm. you're going to have to like get angry and get demanding to get any kind of response. Right. Because yeah. people are so used to like the big box kind of deal. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and so a lot of people will sort of like, you know, start off with that kind of <laughs> assumption. And you, yeah, I can tell, I can tell when they're doing that. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, I try not to take it personally and I take deep breaths. And sometimes I don't respond until the next day because, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Okay. So I'm trying to, um, I'm trying to translate the translated instructions. Okay. Uh, so after this is all set up, so there's install one piece, 15 centimeter, two pin pH 2.0 wire, which has to be this, um, on plus and minus. Is that on I, I have a couple of things that I'm still missing. So I need the capacitors put in. Is the long to positive here too? Oh, I see. Are they having a solder to the, oh, that's weird. Um, Okay, okay, so I have um, the blue capacitor. Which one is that? Oh, the the blue capacitor, it should have written on it 100 microfarads. I know, but is it C2 or C3? Oh, um, hang on. It's oh, on the right or in the middle? On my board. Uh, blue is C2, green is C3. And the positive is um, and long. Yes, positive is long. And the negative side is marked on the capacitor. You can see it negative side is like the white white stripe with minuses in it okay yeah, yeah, yeah. so c and then c3 is green yep and then what's what's j1 uh so j1 and j2 and j3 are all the resist all of the leg jumpers the bent, bent yeah but cuttings. there's a what about the j1 on the bottom left the bottom right oh j1 sorry um Oh, there are, two, are there two J1s on this board? Yeah. Ha, that's funny. Okay, yeah, J1 on the bottom left is the, right. uh, the little two-pin guy. The the button? The, um, here, let me, let me switch. Oh, the two-pin guy, okay. Yeah, the two-pin header is this. Okay, I should have done that earlier. Although, hang on, before you, before you do that... Mm, let me see for a second. Okay, well, I'll get the I'll, I'll, while you figure it out. I'm looking at these other ones. Yeah. So... My, my phone is going to die soon. <laughs> Your phone is going to die soon? Yeah. So you might stuck to Plug it in. Plug it in. <laughs> well, I have to go back to the main house. Uh, you, can, you can step away for a bit. That's okay. So, yeah, let me finish these first. So now I'm thinking I shouldn't have soldered the J1 in. Hang on. Oh, okay. So Oh, funny. Okay. So I think the Oh man. Okay. I think that J1 is for power. And I think that they're having us solder wires to it and then cut off the connector. Maybe. No, let's not. I don't want to cut off the connector. This is so weird. Then, okay, install one piece of the two pin, two pin wire on plus and minus. Red wire connects to plus, black wire connects to minus. Then cut white socket. These two wires are used to connect Bluetooth audio controller and LED board. So this must be, this one must be the audio controller. This one must be LED board. Um, but it has, I mean, it has places for these connectors to plug in. So I really don't understand that instruction. <laughs> so maybe I'm going to skip it for now. Um, hmm. Tear off. 
tear off protective film from the acrylic. Hey, wait, wait, hold on. You're doing the jumpers or no? Um, J1, J2, and J3, the bent leg ones, but the J1 with the plus minus next to it, maybe don't, don't totter the header in there yet. And then, oh, I think e each of these has, uh, each of these acrylic pieces still has like film on it too, I think. Would you like to help peel film? Awesome. Is there film? Yeah, it's just really hard to see. It's it's what makes it um, kind of opaque. Oh. Yeah. And I think it's on both sides. And it's probably going to be a total pain in the ass to. Okay, it's not too bad. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay. I'm going to get chargers. I'm going to be here peeling film and reading ahead. <laughs> Oh, interesting. Okay. And then we're going to start um, putting putting these guys on the acrylic panel that is the base for the LED board. Ah, so that must be this one with all of the LED holes stuck in it. <laughs> ah, I think there's only there's only plastic on one side. I think, or at least on that one, there was only plastic. Yeah, no, on. Or no, there are two. Oh, that was the one that I just did. Never okay. mind. There's two. Never mind. All right. Ah, so Bob, you moved around, moved around a lot as a kid, as a military kid. That would do it. Yeah, it's it's interesting. Like I um I didn't really I didn't really know any any military kids like that when I was growing up because like the US Virgin Islands isn't really a place that has a giant military presence. It's like a tends to be a port for vacationing for that that uh that ships stop off and like, you know, let the sailors off to let off steam rather than anything else. But, um, but there were a lot of kids moving in and out because since it was, you know, the Caribbean people tended to like move there, stay there for a couple of years and then just kind of move on and do something else. And there were some kids too, whose um, parents you know, who lived on boats and they and their parents would just like basically like cruise around and go from place to place, spend a few years in one place and cruise around to the next one. All right, we're almost there. So I think that now yeah, the, so the weird thing is, like, this clearly has some places for these wires to plug in. So I'm not quite sure why it was telling us, it seemed to be telling us to solder wires in here and then, like, cut off the plastic connector, if I'm interpreting them right. And that just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. So we'll see. We'll see how this all starts to go together, maybe, and see where the other wires are supposed to go, and uh, yeah, go from there. Yeah. All right. Last bit. Plastic. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this one, I think, you know, was like that somehow. This somehow has to go. 
Or maybe it just, uh, maybe it just has holes for them to shine through. Oh, this is so confusing. Huh. Huh. All right. We're, we're gonna, gonna figure it out. Um, I hope that like the LEDs weren't supposed to be soldered on the back or something. No, the silk was all in the front. Oh, install Oh, now they're <laughs> apparently the reason that this is so long is because there are photos of the installation steps. Hmm. Okay. 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 We're doing good so far. Okay. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> what? Uh, what did we miss? We fucked up. <laughs> what? Oh, no. oh boy. So apparently the LEDs are supposed to be at 90 degrees. We're supposed to bend them over. I've already chopped mine way too short. I've already chopped all mine too. Um, I mean, I could kind of kludge it and like, I could take them off and kludge it and surface mount them. Or I could send you new LEDs. <laughs> Cause I think I have these same ones. <laughs> Oh man. 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 I guess this is where reading instructions early helps. Well, I didn't realize there was a whole several pages of photos after the text. So eh, interesting. Okay. Hang on. I'm just I'm just gonna read through it and see what else we screwed up on. Okay, yeah. So they do want us to just wire to J1, which is not making sense to me. Well, don't they want to use this first and then wire to this or no? The uh, they don't see, they, yeah, that does not seem to be the case. I don't know what that little, what that little header is for anymore. So we got that, we got that. Okay, so then we have a bunch of wires. Okay, so these guys are for wiring to the speakers. Okay. And then this one is for wiring to the power and the power input power connector and the switch. Okay. You know what I'm going to do? Let's just make it all. And then if, if you get around to sending me a new LED, it's great. If not, it will just be, could, could it still be assembled without it being bent? I don't know. I don't know. We will find out. Because I have a Dremel. I mean, I could spare a Dremel if I have to. <laughs> right? Okay. So. All right. I think we'll start off with this one. Putting the, um, the copper the copper standoffs on. So we got to find the panel that has, aha, two offset holes in it. Right there and right there. That, that is true, Bob. He points out that, like, we should still be able to make, like, everything work, even if it doesn't fit in the box. <laughs> so maybe that's a good idea. Maybe let's, like, let's do that. So um, yeah. All right, I'm going to look at, oh, that is super interesting and kludgy. Okay. <laughs> so we can just wire up the speakers. Let's do that. All right, I'm gonna make sure that, my, that the mark, minus mark on the speaker and the plus mark of the speaker is actually plus and minus, yes, according to the instructions. <laughs> 
<laughs> because I don't trust anything anymore. <laughs> oh man. Oh well. It'll be okay. It'll no, be um I had made these nice little jumpers. Oh, but yeah? when I turned it over, it fell through the other end. So it's not as flush as I'd like it to be. But uh anyway. yeah. Okay, so I am now down. The only thing I'm missing now is the J1. So J1, I just put yeah. these. Are you, you just, sure, like, we you, you don't put this in? And then yeah, you put the I, to it? yeah, so they gave us the part, but they decided some point, place along the line, that you, they were just going to wire straight into it. I mean, I'll solder the wires to my header that's in there, but I, there is no point of, like, soldering the header in first if you're just going to solder wires in. It's, it'll be way nicer to just solder the wires into those into the board directly. I say, are you saying that this this white portion is a connector for something else? Yes. Well, so yes, it's weird. So they have you basically use one of these things just for the wires. So they have you solder the wires in the plus and the minus, and then cut off the connector. Oh. Yeah. That's odd. <laughs> right. <laughs> it just feels like you should just attach this in there and then attach this on it. And then you can have. The thing is they haven't provided enough connectors on this board to do, to give power to this guy. So you actually, you solder the wires from solder, the wires from this guy that will solder on like right there. You solder the wires from there to the underside of um, the red connector. To like the pins that are coming off of the back of the red connector. I know. Okay, so hold on. So you have this and you're soldering this these plus or minuses onto the red guy? Yeah, let me show you. Oh man. Do you see the picture? It just seems stupid. Yes, jump over there. I agree. <laughs> I agree. It is annoyingly stupid. <laughs> I'm going to. I... Oh, but I'm going to solder up the speaker because the speaker is less stupid. <laughs> oh. I'm. I'm glad I have company for this kit, Bibiana. It's good to have this moral support. <laughs> oh. oh, anytime. Cool. So now, is it your current company or is it the one before that pro that actually provided, like, they actually had, like, two paths and one was like a technical contributor path and one was, was a management path and you could like kind of my current it. one okay okay carrie i'm doing this i can't it's, yeah. i just it's wrong with me so i'm gonna connect this piece this jumper thingy in here yeah. and then connect it my my leads to that okay you can do that i guess i'm starting twice so i don't need to right yeah but then this connect this falls in here basically, right? Or do I need to? No, it, it doesn't. You're cutting off that connector and soldering those wires to the bottom of the red connector. Oh my god. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. So which one goes where? Um, so red red is in plus and black is in minus. Red is in plus, black is in minus. <laughs> oh, I totally agree. Oh my gosh, this wire is like too skinny. And I am melting shit. Come on. That's uh, what I'm saying right now, too. Come on, just get in there. Okay. Um so <laughs> yes. Technically, the JST connector will fit in the two-pin header. However, that two-pin header is already needed for something else. Okay. Fine. Right. So they they basically they basically messed up and have one fewer connector than they needed to have on the kit. 
and um, and so wiring to the to the bottom of one connector instead. <laughs> kind of kludgy, kind of kludgy. This is just not. It makes me sad looking at these beads. <laughs> it would not pass muster. <laughs> Doesn't have nice wetting. At the joint. Nice. Yes. <laughs> well, also recall that you're using lead-free solder, and lead-free solder always looks like ass compared to lead. lead it's true. So I had this. Oh my goodness! One of my projects I worked on it was a speaker issue, and it was the worst type of failure, which is intermittent failure. Oh. It had to do with the fact that we didn't have very good connections yeah okay yep. so I'll, I'll cut this off right uh yes and then oh then i gotta strip it yep all right and let's see Hopefully these are a little, I was um, doing electrical work on my deck. Oh yeah. I couldn't find a stripper and it was like thick electrical wire. So I got a Dremel. <laughs> wow. How, how did that work out? It worked. <laughs> you fine? Yeah. I mean. Nice. <laughs> I like it. I cringe, but I like it. No, I was cringing too. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Brandon was just shaking his head. Okay, so ground black. All right. This is gonna be a little harder to do. I got my speakers. <sighs> I gotta do that stupid soldering now. Let's see. To the, I think I'll. I don't know which side I want to do first? Do this side first. Why not? Um, I might solder to the base of mine instead of to the top, just to keep the top free for, I don't know, connecting something else. We shall see. All right. This is going to be a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Usually, like, you mean Bob like, says this is not I'm a sketch sorry, for um, I could not contain Bibiana. What's that? <laughs> Justin, you're like, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know how she is. No, it is fine. It is fine. We're both like swearing at this thing. <laughs> so yeah, Bob, Bob, Bob is solidly in our court here. He says it's definitely kludgy. <laughs> Not not something that's super beginner friendly, which I would definitely agree with. All right. I'll look at these joints and see if they're any good. Mm. Yeah, we'll live. Okay. So now I'm cutting off my stupid connector. I'm gonna cut it off a little long so I can maybe use that. That's useful. <laughs> It's so useful, totally useful. <laughs> Robin's like shaking her head, like, yeah. How many foot pedal cables do we have? <laughs> thousands. <laughs> thousands of cable ends, yes, thousands. I need to compare your stuff, you though. did, those are super cool, I love them. Yeah, we have a problem throwing away things that are like, but this still could be useful. At least we got rid of the <laughs> We did get rid we of the motor wire. Progress. Yes, yes, yes. We did decide to throw away old wire clippings, basically. <laughs> Those weren't taking up nearly as much space, though, as the other ones. This is, I don't, this is going to be hard. I'm going to say it right now. Yeah. My skills are not <laughs> great. And your tip is 
big too. So uh, in the wires first, that will help. Wait, pin the wires first? What do you mean? Uh, tin. Tin them. Like, coat them with solder. Oh, okay. Um, okay, so now I'm going to solder this one first. I'm going to try it and zoom in a little bit here. Oh, I might be able to microscope this. Let's see. Let's see. Now you can see the terrible job that I'm about to do. Perfect. <laughs> so I'm just going to see if I can get the existing solder to reflow. Oh, that's actually pretty good. All right. I'm not unhappy with that. It's really helpful if you have a microscope, Bibiana. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, bitch. Thanks, bitch. <laughs> okay. This is... <laughs> the lighting is not that great either in this room. Oh, yeah, that's tough. that's tough. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna this. I think all I have to do. Oh, shit. Do we have to we, we have to provide our own power for this, huh? I think it's USB power, right? No. It's little, um, it's barrel jack power. Um, probably five volts though. Oh, are you kidding me? <laughs> at, at this rate, I'm never going to test this. <laughs> I'll test mine. <laughs> oh. All right. Let's see how long of wires they were doing for the power. And then like, once the power is in, I think I can test it out. Um, okay. Let's see. We got like blah, 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 switches and stuff. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. This is how you, they want you to do it. Oh, we can actually put them in the panel. That would work. Okay. We'll do that. So these little guys just snap in from the front Chink. pop and then this one looks like yeah also it goes in from the front but it screws okay let's see i'm gonna put it in the same orientation that they're showing in the photo so that we don't get it confused Tighten that up later. Okay. Okay. So now <laughs> I'm guessing I'm going to take the second, yeah, set of wires. Okay. And just cut a little off. Okay. Okay. Yep. Really having us do a bit of splicing and dicing here. So we have to cut off part of the red end. Let's see how long do I need it? Not too long. I'm going to measure. There we go. That. Strip it. Let's see, tin it. Okay, now I can solder this up. Oop, I did not tin that side very well. There we go, nope. 
Okay, I don't think I can do this. This is <laughs> Yeah. That's okay. If you need more light to do that later, that's cool. I'm gonna try to finish mine up right now. I think I can. I think I'm like almost there doing the last bit of power wiring and then I should be able to plug in everything together and <laughs> at least sort of see it work, maybe. <laughs> um, Robin, could you find us a five volt power supply? <laughs> I think five volts. Um, yes, because that input, that input there, that input there, and that goes does to there. Yes, it's five volts. Okay, does it need a specific amount of current? No, or, um, just the normal, like a normal barrel, I think should work. Okay. One of those guys. Five so volts. yeah, five volt, like, like one of the wall, wall, wall warts yeah. or yeah. I'm really doing a crappy job of tinning right now. I don't know why this is not working out it's because we're under the gun oh okay okay got it okay so i can bend you over and this little guy and let's see So what do you think your most challenging product to work on was? Like the hardest, hard, hard, one with the hardest problems to solve? I would say that the product I'm working on right now has been probably the most complicated. Mm -hmm. I mean, specifically for me, because it's so much biology based. So that's yeah. been like learning that has been challenging. But it's got a fluidic system. It's got a laser system. It's got um, a software system program that has to run at the same time it's so it's in terms of but it's also like you don't have to worry about size which has been nice because sure. it's a humongous instrument <laughs> <laughs> so um in terms of like complexity that's definitely been more complex in terms of size you know some of the stuff i've worked on are you know stuff that goes in the eye that's been you yeah. know i remember like sitting there arguing with the machinist about like some part that we're making and i'm like can't you just give us this x and he's like that's literally, we're fighting over a half a thousand right now. I'm like, fine, you're right. I, <laughs> when you're modeling it, it's on, you know, you see it in like this large format, right? Right, yeah. And then you're like, oh yeah, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry I'm <laughs> fighting over half a thou when it seems so big on my computer. Right, right. So, um, but yeah, there's definitely like every company has, every work I've had has had its own share of challenges for sure. But in terms of complexity of, of and like it, this company, the, the work I'm doing right now is definitely stretching my brains way more than it's had to be stretched in a while. So that's been fun too. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, what has been your favorite thing to work on so far that you've done? Um, I mean, I worked, I was at microsurgical technology for so long. I think the best part of that job was having the actual interface with the doctors. Mm, yeah. So, you know, I'd go to conferences and they, you know, some of them would have awesome ideas. Some of them have like mediocre ideas or whatever, but like, um, I think just as, as a company and product I worked on it, that was pretty fun, especially since you got to actually see the outcome of it pretty readily. The, just I've, all the doctors are really friendly and, you know, going to surgery is always fun too. Nice. Okay. Got one there. I think I'm on my last, my last thing that I'm soldering up. Okay. This is it. Okay, so what is there after this stupid power leads? Um, so have you, have you soldered on the speakers, the wires to the speakers too? No. Yeah, that's, that's still there. <laughs> I 
just just think of how much money you're saving, Bibiana. <laughs> <laughs> We're laughing extra hard because she had to buy like a soldering iron and solder and supplies and stuff like that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Now I have to make to make to get some return on investment, I definitely yeah. need to make more stuff. <laughs> right? Exactly. <laughs> That's how it goes. Better solder more things. <laughs> uh <laughs> oh oh right it is usb powered okay thank you bob i'm glad somebody is paying attention because <laughs> so i've about had it with this kit i forgot that okay we do have a usb cable it is just a power cable though it's a usb power cable so it has a jack on one end and and usb port on the other end and so we can use USB indeed to power it. Do you want me to go get the little? Uh, I, th I think I can make it to the one up there. I think. We'll see. Kacha. All right. Um, look, I've melted my. Uh... <laughs> what did you melt? <laughs> I melted some of the plastics. <laughs> <laughs> Hey man, that means you're soldering. Oh man. <laughs> Remember I told you like, hey Carrie, should I get a little clip that helps me hold things in place? And you're like, yeah, it should be fine. <laughs> like, you'll be oh, fine for now. It'll be fine. Soldering adventures. Okay. All right. Power switches. That is the power switch is marked backwards, I think. Maybe, maybe not, maybe not. Okay, we'll see. We're gonna assume that it's marked correctly. Um, okay. <laughs> maybe I'll read the instructions before doing anything. Nothing happened, so I think it is indeed still off. Here, I'm going to clean up the area so that we have all of the, all of the pieces in here. All right, those over here, I'll put you over here, you over here. Think we're we're done with all of the extra the leads. Oh sure, yeah, that would be great. Um, ciao. We might have to use our little mushroom to get the rest of them. Maybe, yeah. Don't don't mind us with the little mushroom. Oh, I think it needs new. There we go. Woo! I know he's so cute. It actually works reasonably well. Mm -hmm. Okay. So oh God, we got speaker, speaker, front panel, <laughs> the CD thingy kit. We're going to have to, shit, I'm going to have to like figure out what music to play on it too. Let's see if my phone can connect to it once it's up. Okay, so we got everything there. Just going okay, through the rest of these first. pieces. <laughs> oh, blah, blah, assemble all that shit. Okay. <laughs> connect to power supply and enjoy the effect. Please provide visual working current is recommended to use a five volt two amp power supply. So we'll see if this USB will Wait, actually- Does it matter which one I put leads onto on the speakers? Uh, yes, it, there's plus and minus marked on the speaker. Oh, yes. Or, yeah, red red to plus, black to minus. Oh. All right. I'm going to turn it on and enjoy the effect. Are we ready? <laughs> we'll see if anything explodes. Woo. Bluetooth mode. Did you hear that? I heard, what did it say? Bluetooth mode. Um, does it have? Okay. Hey, that's a good sign though. It talked to you. I know it is a good sign that it talked. Um, and like LEDs are flashing. Uh, let me see if I can pair to it with my phone. What the heck would this be called? 
is the other question. Let's see. Uh... Um... I love how there are like no usage instructions. <laughs> Uh, you just have to enjoy the effect. Just enjoy the effect, yes. Uh, let's see. Maybe there are usage instructions at the very beginning. Uh, remote controller, switch audio source, mute on, off, play, T blah, 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 DIY kit. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just like, I'm like, which of these 20 things? Other devices. Maybe it's this one. Connected. Ooh, did you hear that? I did. Connected. I'm jealous. Oh. I don't know if the I don't know if the uh that's an interesting observation, Bob. I wasn't paying attention to the um LEDs as I was talking. But we'll see. Okay, we're connected. So it it shows up on my phone as H J dash M Z. <laughs> of course it does. Of course it does. All right. So now the next question is, what music do I have on my phone? I have Alice in Chains. Imagine that. <laughs> wow. Oh, now we're going to get into YouTube licensing issues. <laughs> so no, it's not monetized. Uh, it's, yeah, it still might. Does it clip into these things? What's that? Does, does the speakers actually clip into these? Blue yes, spots? they plug into the white ones. Yeah. So is there a switch sound quality play pause? Let's see if that works. Oh, there we go. Okay. Just took a couple presses. Look, a remote that actually does play in pause. <laughs> right. Okay. Volume. Can you do 11? I don't know, man. I'm trying to crank it to 11. It doesn't seem to want to be cranked. So this is mute. Okay. Oh, it just needs to be very pointed at the, it's IR. It must be IR. So, okay. Maximum volume. Oh. Maximum volume. <laughs> That's it? Hang on. Let me turn the phone all the way up on my volume all the way up on my phone. Oh. It is everything I hoped and dreamed it would be. <laughs> it is it is every bit as crappy as a twenty dollar Bluetooth speaker kit should be. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bob. The the Bluetooth device identified as as HJ MZ, you know, because that makes sense. Well, um, it's sort of a success, except for the fact that. It, probably won't fit in the enclosure, but um, I could try putting like the front panel in and stuff at least. Hey, we can 3D put another part. <laughs> there we go. You know what, oh, I have a laser cut at work. 718, which is, is quite long for us. I usually have a strict cut off at seven, but it was like so close. But um, yeah, uh, anyway, I think I will cut off the stream now um, Bibiana, you don't have to leave or anything. We can keep chatting after, after yeah, we I'm gonna get this to work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can keep chatting after afterwards. Um, but I just want to say thank you for everybody for tuning in. This is fun. Uh, thank you, Bibiana, for coming on. It's always awesome to chat with somebody and get their story and their experiences and get that. Thanks for having more, me. Yeah. We're out in the world. Cool. Awesome. All right. Well, um, next week, I think we're going to have um, 
David, who um, is doing a little bit of work for me. Um, and he goes by the moniker I shot JR on Twitter. I think that he is going to do a, um, a little, uh, he's going to, he and I are going to, he's going to come on and we're going to do a little show about, um, why is the name escaping me right now? The little bleep bloop makers. Uh, arcade. Yes. Those. Cal music calculator. The pocket operators. Pocket, <laughs> yeah. pocket, so, operator, pocket operators. Yeah. They're these like cool little tiny like synthesizer sequencer machines that are sort of in the shape of calculators that have a bunch of buttons and it makes really cool sounds. So yeah, that'll be next week. And I'll probably, probably be doing a pop-up stream pretty soon in the next couple of days, uh, doing the assembly of the RBG board. So yeah, we'll do the solder paste and we'll uh, do the manual pick and place under the microscope of components and then put it through the oven and bake it. And then maybe we'll even try to power it up and and uh, program it. I'm not sure if I'm ready to do that live, though. <laughs> That's always the moment of truth. All right. Well, thanks again, everybody. And we're going to sign off. I will call this relatively, relatively successful. <laughs> oh, All right. Yeah.